Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is water. W-A-T-E-R. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! I thought he went where the wild goose goes. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's first? A couple of Irish people selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air. It's our way of noticing St. Patrick's Day, Groucho, and here they are, Miss Beth O'Haggerty and Mr. John Daniger. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. Mr. Uh, uh, Dan, uh, how do you pronounce it? Danaher. Danaher. Yes. What do you got that G in there? Just to fool people? <laughs> that's, a, that's a real Irish name, huh? Real Irish. I bet your life is a real Irish name. And we got a plug for the show, too. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Paddy, me lad? I'm from Roscommon on the banks of the Shannon in the west part of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds pretty authentic, huh? <laughs> how, how long since you, since you were in Ireland? Forty-two years. And after all these years, you still have a touch of the old sod? You betcha. <laughs> yes, sir. Have you tried Fels Napter and a good stiff brush? <laughs> <laughs> Miss o- O'Haggerty, I, at least I can pronounce that, huh? <laughs> Beth O'Haggerty, huh? That's right. Which part of Ireland are you from, uh, Beth? Well, I didn't come from Ireland. And how is it you're Irish? Uh, was one of your ancestors a policeman? Both of, <laughs> <laughs> Both of my grandparents came from Ireland. Oh, I see. Then you're Irish twice removed. Uh, <laughs> I've been twice removed from Ireland myself. <laughs> well, if you're not from Ireland, where, where are you from, Miss O'Haggerty? I'm from Los Angeles. Well, you're a fine-looking lass. Thank you. Why is it you're not married, Beth? Beautiful girl like you. Oh, I just never found anyone who... Any man that was strong enough to take me away from my job, my career. What are you, a wrestler? <laughs> What is this tenacious job that you stick to, uh, like adhesive tape, huh? Well, at, at present, it's uh, a secretary in the tax and insurance department at Paramount. Yeah, I was there a couple weeks ago. I was, did a scene do? in Bing Crosby's picture, Mr. Music. You, know, you didn't see me tripping the light fantastic there. Well, my job doesn't have much contact with the talent. Well, mine doesn't either. But, <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm in that picture. Huh? How, how old are you, Mr. Donegan? Sixty years. Sixty, well, you don't look at him. You're a huh. fine broth of a boy. <laughs> and when I say broth, I don't mean Irish stew, huh? <laughs> well, you're a little old here for Beth, aren't you? Huh? I think so. I really think I am. But besides, I'm married. Well, then it's not very important, huh? <laughs> How did you meet your spouse, uh, Johnny? Well, it's, it's well, about... Well, there's more to it than that, I think. <laughs> It's about 45 years ago. It was in a small town in the west of Ireland, and she was out on the street chasing a chicken. <laughs> and you were doing the same thing, huh? <laughs> I don't know anyone. I caught the chicken, I took the chicken back, and I put it in the, in the hen house at the back of her house. And then I went back the next night and made my acquaintance, and, well, that's all. I'm married to her now anyway. What happened to the chicken? <laughs> I don't know. I never made any inquiries. <laughs> Patty, do you, sp- do you speak Gaelic? A little bit, not much. Well, could you give us a few words? Well, K. Wiltu, Tama Gamai. K. Wiltu Hain, Gamai. Garima Haikut, Tasuro Gagan, Kanteke Me Aristo. What does that mean, eh? Well, it means, uh, good evening. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Where is your chicken? I hope tonight, I'll see huh? you again. <laughs> <laughs> could, could you tell me a joke in Gaelic? No, I couldn't. I, I really couldn't tell you. I wouldn't be able to remember that. Now, what I could tell you is a short one in English, if it's any good to you. Oh. 
Well, well, frankly, we could use a joke about here. <laughs> let's, hear, let's hear the one in English, huh? Well, it's, Don't it's make a... the English too good or I won't understand it. <laughs> well, this, is, this, uh, this isn't about the English. It's in the English language. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's about Pat that was up on the fourth floor in a building and was on fire. And he shouted to Mike down on the sidewalk and he says, uh, Mike, I'm going to jump. Catch me. So he jumped, flopped down on the sidewalk and Mike jumped away from him and he flopped on the sidewalk and was stretched out. And he says, say... Why didn't you catch me? He says, I was waiting to see if you'd bounce. <laughs> well, Pat, uh, if that joke is any indication, you're a much older man than I thought you were. Tell me, Mr. Donay, uh, uh, have you ever seen a, lepre a leprechaun, huh? No, I've never seen a leprechaun. What is a leprechaun? Is it anything like a republicon? Uh? No, no. They're imaginary people. Well, know. that's a republicon, all right. Uh, they're imaginary people these days, too. Huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, uh, how do you usually celebrate St. Patrick's Day, uh, Johnny? Oh, take a couple of nips or something like that. You know? <laughs> Hang around the rest of the day and take it easy. What's the real reason you Irish celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Well, because St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland, and he, he drove the snakes out of Ireland. And where are they now? Huh? <laughs> and that, what, after a nip or two, I suppose they all came back again. Huh? <laughs> well, after talking to you two, all I can say is a happy St. Patrick's Day to you both. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance at $1,000. You bet your life. When you call on any one of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, you'll find it's their honest desire to please you, no matter how small the job to be done. The DeSoto Plymouth dealers offer you the benefit of not only the best tools and equipment, not only the factory-trained mechanics, but they also feel it's important to be courteous, to give their customers a square deal. That's their creed, their way of doing business. So no matter where you drive, remember there are DeSoto Plymouth dealers anxious to serve you. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now let's see if an Irish Carlene and her partner will be the ones who get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question. Fanneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has twenty dollars. They bet as much of that twenty as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the thousand dollar question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected capitals of foreign countries as your category. Is that correct? Okay. Now you have $20. How much are you going to risk? Ten. What is the capital city of Denmark? Oslo. Is that the answer you two agree upon? Do you agree with that, uh, Beth? One answer between you now. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's Copenhagen. Now, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $10 will you bet? Five. What is the capital city of the Netherlands? Netherlands. Don't know. Take a guess, Beth. I can't even think at this point. Well, it's Amsterdam. They now have $5. Now you're down to $5. Now, here's your third question. How much of the five will you try? The five. What is the capital city of Spain? Madrid. Madrid is right. <laughs> We're on the way now. They have $10. All right, now you got $10. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 10 will you try? 10. All right. What is the capital city of Portugal? Lisbon. Lisbon is right. And they wind up with the $20 they started with. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still water. Perhaps the next couple will say it. They're a barber, Mr. Arthur Fredman, and a housewife, Mrs. Dorsey Rigney, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word at any time, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A barber and a housewife, eh? Uh, Mr. Friedman, you're the barber, I presume, eh? That's right. <laughs> Well, there are lady barbers, you know. <laughs> where, where are you from, uh, Mr. Friedman? 1533 Vine Street, side of Horace Barbershop. 
Is that where you were born? Huh? Minneapolis, Minnesota. The one. I thought perhaps you were born on the third chair as you come in. Huh? <laughs> you were born where? Minneapolis, Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. The land of 10,000 lakes, and you left all of them, is that it? That's right. Uh, where are you from, Mrs. Uh, Rigney? I'm from Green Acres, Washington. What sort of work does your husband do? Uh... Uh, my husband is a disabled veteran, but I'm a truck driver. Truck? What kind of a truck? Uh... Well, now I'm hauling house trailers with a truck. People live in these Oh, things? yes, people live in them. And you pull them across the country while they're living in them? No, I just pull them and, and set them on their lot, and they use that in place of a house, most of them. Oh. Uh, how long have you been a barber, Mr. Friedman? Uh, Seventeen years. Seventeen years, huh? Well, you don't look at You're a very young-looking man. Uh, where does your husband get his hair cut, Mrs.? Uh... Well, he doesn't have any steady barber. What, is he stewed? <laughs> <laughs> Do your customers ever ask you uh, what's a good way for a man to save his hair, Mr. Friedman? Yes, they do. Well, what do you tell them? Put it in the cigar box. <laughs> you know, that there's a sister joke to that one you just pronounced over there. It's the one where the fellow writes in and says, How do you avoid falling hair? And the fellow writes back, Step nimbly to one side. <laughs> Incidentally, I know of a hair tonic that'll grow hair in a frying pan. But who wants a hairy frying pan? <laughs> no joke, but then this is a very old frying pan. <laughs> How did you get to be a barber? Did you start out when you were a little shaver? Went to barber college. Huh? I went to barber college. You went to barber college? Yes. What influence has the electric razor had on the barber profession? It cuts down the shaves about 25%. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? Every time there's another razor sold, you raise the price of the shave. Is that it? No. Do you use electric razor? I use an electric razor, yes. Yeah. Someday I hope to get the chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something I've always wanted to know. Where do you get all these old magazines for your customers? We don't have all these. Are you buying from dentists? Uh, we don't have them. <laughs> Or are you in business for yourself, huh? Where do you get them? You don't have all magazines? No. Well, if one of your customers brings in the latest issue of Look Magazine, be sure to see it, will you? There's a flattering piece about me and our show in the current Look Magazine. Or maybe it'll help them forget that they just lost your ears in your barber shop. Huh? <laughs> Why is it women don't get bald as often as men, Mr. Friedman? Well, the female is different than the male. <laughs> Well, that's about as accurate a statement as I've ever heard. <laughs> Nobody is more aware of that than I am, Mr. Friedman. <laughs> well, now, let's see if, uh, if a professional clipper like you and, uh, can clip an old cut-up like me for $1,000. Now, you beat the other couples, and you earn the chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The Irish couple won $20. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected songs about anatomy as your category. Is that right? That's right. Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten. What's the name of this song? Okay, Jerry. Well, what do you say, kids? What do you say? Um. I'm if sorry. the smoke gets in your eyes, huh? <laughs> now, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. That's the big prize anyway. Now, how much of the $10 will you try? Five. $5? Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. Tiptoe through the, Tip -toe through the tulips Tip -toe. is right, huh? They now have $15. All right, now you got $15. How much of the 15 will you try? Ten. Okay, here's your third question. Let's see if you can identify this one for 10 bucks. <laughs> What do you say, kids? Take a guess. I'm sorry. It's in my arms. You should have known that. They now have five dollars. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the five will you try? Five. What's the name of this song? Play. Take a guess.
Body and soul. Body and soul is right. And they wind up with ten dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in just a minute, our last couple will try for the chance at $1,000. Fenneman, who's ahead? Well, the Irish couple is leading with $20. And the secret word is still water. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some collectors from the Bureau of Internal Revenue and some Hollywood business managers to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected collector William Kenny and manager Maurice Dolman. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gents, to you bet your life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A business manager and an income tax collector, is that right, uh, Mr. Uh, Kenny? That's right. You're the uh, income tax man, huh? Yes, I am. I recognized you by your short form. Huh? <laughs> well, where are you from, Mr. Kenny? I'm from uh, Miami, Florida. How long have you been an income tax collector? About seven months. How did you happen to go into this nefarious trade, huh? Well, I uh, took the examination in Florida, and I wanted to come to California. Well, you know, you can live in California without being with the Revenue Department, huh? <laughs> Although it's not easy. You know? <laughs> what prompted you to become an income tax man? I mean, what did you do prior to that? I was a bank examiner for the federal government. <laughs> Do you have a, a nickname, uh, Mr. Kenny? Yes, uh... What is it? Eh? At school, they call me Frog. <laughs> Why, did you hop around a lot in those days? <laughs> are, are you married, Froggy? Oh, yes, I am. I... And, uh, how helpful is marriage from the income tax standpoint? Well, this year, uh, wife is worth $600. <laughs> Well, everything's in play to these days. <laughs> is that alive, Mr. Kenny? Or is that... <laughs> Has to be alive, huh? It, uh, she must be alive at the time of filing. <laughs> you don't care if they drop dead the following day, huh? <laughs> How about children? What are, what are they worth? This year, kids are worth six hundred dollars. <laughs> hey, the little ones are worth just as much as the big ones. Huh? <laughs> do, do you have any children, Mister Kenny? Not yet. Not yet. Well, then you're out six hundred bucks, aren't you? <laughs> By the process of elimination, I, I presume that you're the uh, business manager, Mister Dolman. Huh? I am. Where Where are you from? I'm from New York. What outfit do you do you work for? I'm in business for myself. Oh, you mind your own business, eh? <laughs> Just what do you do in your business? I, mi I manage the business affairs of other people. Then you don't mind your own business. <laughs> what do you have to know to be a business manager, Mr. Doman? Well, primarily you have to have a good head for business. Is that in addition to the one you carry around now? <laughs> well, Froggy, let's get back to you, huh? You're standing there dreaming of somebody you're going to soak tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Specifically, what is your job with the Income Tax Department or the Bureau of Internal Revenue? Huh? Well, we... Pretty fancy name for a crooked outfit. Huh? <laughs> we go out and track down delinquent taxpayers and... Suppose a fellow owes you $7,000 and he has no money. What do you do now? If he's got the money, we'll collect it. If he doesn't... If he hasn't got it, you can't throw him in the can for that, though, huh? If he hasn't got it, no, and he hasn't prepared a fraudulent return. No. But we don't uh, put him in jail if they just don't have the money to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to know, no? <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what are some of the things we should know about income taxes? For example, should a married man file a joint return or a single return? This year, it would uh, be to his advantage to file a joint return with his wife, and that way he could take advantage of the split income provision. When do I get my split? Uh, <laughs> what's a joint return? Is that a nightclub with a money-back guarantee? <laughs> a joint return is where a husband and wife file one return together and pool their income and prepare one tax return. Now, in filing a joint return, how much am I allowed as a deduction for myself? This year, you would be allowed... $600 as uh, head of the house. 
That's just fantasy on your part, you know. <laughs> I'm no more the head of the house than you are a frog, Mr. King. <laughs> How about Mr. Dolman over here? Does he get another 600 off because of his extra head for business? <laughs> now, what is the difference, Froggy, but, uh, between the short form and the long form? Well, the short form, the 1040A, you can That gets claim... in at 11 o'clock, huh? <laughs> claim, or that is on the short form, you can claim only 10% deductions of your uh, gross income. Do you carefully examine every form that comes into your office, Mr. Kenny? No, we don't go over every form. We um, just uh, look at the above the average forms, that is, we... <laughs> You mean the ordinary form you don't pay any attention to? Well, would you like me to come down and just look at the average form for you? <laughs> I'm not as calloused as you are, you know. <laughs> Why don't you examine uh, every form? Well, we just don't have the personnel to go over every form that walk goes in the office. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, in, in regards to that, I, I want to add that we do pay particular attention to the Farms that go into big figures. Mm -hmm. uh, this, could, this could get out of hand, you know. But... <laughs> you must have an army of bookkeepers to go over all those forms. How long does it take you? Well, it doesn't take long. We have a uh, huge machine that is really a mechanical brain. You have a mechanical brain? <laughs> and Mr. Dolman has two heads over here? <laughs> I'm the only one around here with a single-track mind. <laughs> I'm still thinking of those average forms. <laughs> now, if you were my business manager, Mr. Dolman, how could you save me money on income taxes? Well, <clears throat> I... Oh, brother, are you on a spot now? <laughs> I can see the handcuffs sticking out of his back pocket. Huh? <laughs> I'll bring you an apple pie with a saw in it in the morning. Huh? Well, what we do is keep proper record of your deductions. Uh-huh. You know, you know uh, in your business, you listen to the radio, you have to, to listen to other comedy programs that we can take depreciation on your radio. You have to listen to other programs? <laughs> I'd rather lose my deduction and not have to listen, huh? <laughs> now, uh, suppose I was thinking of hiring you to help me take care of my business affairs, Mr. Dolman. I haven't any, but just pretend, huh? What would you want to know about me? Well, first, I'd want to know if you were honest. <laughs> if I were honest, I wouldn't need your help, Mr. Dolman. <laughs> Well, between the two of you, you've succeeded in confusing all three of us. Now, you're going to try for a chance at $1,000. You beat the other two couples, and that's all you have to do. You're pretty smart fellows. I can't tell you how much they won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The Irish couple is ahead with $20. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected instruments played by orchestra leaders as your category. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you try? We'll try for 10 Okay. What instrument does Harry James play? Trumpet. Trumpet is right. <laughs> Off to a good start. They have thirty dollars. I want to. I want to warn you of one thing, boys. You know, if you win any money here tonight, you got to put it on your tax. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Twenty. What instrument does Gene Krupa play? Drums. The drums is right. Huh? They're climbing now. They have fifty dollars. All right, you got fifty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the fifty? Forty. What instrument does Tommy Dorsey play? Trombone. Trombone is right. They're way up there now. They have $90. Well, you slid right into that one with the trombone. Now, you got $90. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Shoot the, Shoot work. the works. What instrument does Carmen Cavallero play? Piano. Piano. The piano is right. And they wind up with $180. 
And that means the tax man and the business manager get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question. What do you expect of the folks who service your car? Efficient service? Courteous service? Service at a fair price? Well, you get them all when you visit one of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. You'll find they're not only ready and willing, but able to give your car the very best in service. And that goes for the major repair jobs as well as the simpler ones. DeSoto Plymouth dealers have factory-trained mechanics who know cars inside and out, no matter what make or what year it happens to be. And in the hands of these expert mechanics are the most modern tools and equipment made. Yes, that's the kind of top service you can count on when you drive your car in at the sign of any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the tax man and the business manager, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you and think carefully. And please, no help from the audience. Here it is. In 1777, the American army defeated the British under General Burgoyne in what has become one of the truly decisive battles of world history. The American victory marked the turning of the tide of independence. What is the name of this battle? Okay, now what is the answer you two have decided upon and talk right up into the microphone? Battle of Yorktown? No, no, I'm sorry. It's the Battle, it's the battle of Saratoga. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the correct answer. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. <laughs> well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $200, $180 in cash? Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Guan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $1,500. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder. Meeting human needs is the objective of all Red Cross services. Respond willingly to the 1950 Red Cross Fund campaign. Remember, you're not giving to, but through the Red Cross. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.